It's your brother, Larry Adenekon, welcoming you to the Really, Really Knowing God channel as I lead this fellowship of information and inspiration in the knowledge of God. All powered by the Pastor Larry Adenekon Center for Education, the PLACE. <music> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus. We are sharing truth this morning on monetary influence on church positions, coming from Acts chapter 8, 14 through 25. Let's pray together this morning and right after we get into it. Father in heaven, we worship you. We bless your great name, O oh God. Father, thank you, thank you, and thank you for all you have been to us here, all you have done for us here, all you have done on our behalf, God, we just thank you. Lord, today, for the sake of your people, let there be utterance, let there be hearing. May we not also be hearers alone, but do us also of your word. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Hallelujah. Okay, then, Acts 8, 14. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard as Samaria, I received the word of God. They sent Peter and John to them who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then they lay hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that through the laying on the apostles' hands the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me the power also that anyone of whom has been my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you. Because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You neither have part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this your weakness, wickedness and pray. If peradventure God the thought of your if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you, for I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Then Simon answered and said, Pray to the Lord for me, that none of these things which you have spoken may come upon me. And when they are testified and preached the word of God, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Hallelujah. So let's go back and then quickly share one or two things. You remember that uh, um, there was a certain man who had been in um, um, Samaria and he had been bewitching them with all kinds of dark powers and people saw everybody felt that this was the great power of God. He didn't even feel he was a messenger, but he felt he was the power of God. Until Philip got there and many people gave their lives to Christ. They saw a clear difference. And this man also now gave his life to Christ. Now look at verse 13. We didn't begin from there this morning, but look at it. And when Simon himself also believed, when he and he was baptized and he continued with philip and was amazed when he saw the miracles and signs which were done i mean miracle is bigger than miracle <laughs> you know praise god so he gave his life to christ and that's the thing we're going to, we're going to i just thought to get that background we're going to come back to that okay now when the apostles who were just when they got to hear that samaria had received the word of god now they looked at samaria they just he didn't just say the people of samaria he said samaria has received the word of god now samaria that is that was the first place after judah or judea yeah after judea to receive christ that was the very first place remember that jesus had told them that they should remain in jerusalem witnesses unto him in judah or judea and samaria you know and all, all the other most parts of the world that's what he said so uh, samaria was the place first place outside judea to receive the gospel and these were people they looked down upon they looked at them as compromisers they looked at them as people who are ignorant you know in the things of god and, and all that that was the way they looked at them and then um, they now have received the gospel wow uh, it was uh, it was an amazing thing it was uh, um, it was um, incredible that uh, people like that have now given their lives to Christ, not just religion, they have actually now become Christians. They have accepted the word. And when they got to here, it was a big thing. And so they sent down uh, the big guys. All right. So, um, you know, at times there are things that have happened to you, the VIPs will come and look for you. And uh, may God make your story so. When something great has happened with you or through you, even VIPs will come visiting you by the grace of God. So they send the big people and they went. And then the Bible says that they prayed that they might receive the Holy Spirit because they had not yet fallen upon any of them, only been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, 
that's an interesting thing philip was the one the bible described as being full of the holy ghost now this guy got people born again but he did not lay hands upon them to receive the baptism of the holy spirit you ask yourself why he himself was full of the holy ghost how come he didn't you know uh, do that second part of his evangelistic work if you like um haven't gotten them born again the next thing to get them filled with the holy ghost but he didn't do that until these big guys came from jerusalem and then they were the ones who laid hands and these people um uh, got uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. So that brings to mind what I call ministerial focus. There are times when the focus of ministry God has given somebody is in this direction and then your own focus is in another direction. Yeah, you don't look at that other person as having a wrong focus. No, that's just the one that God has laid upon his heart or upon his mind and that's where he's focused, that's where she's focused. Whereas you are focused in another direction and each person should just respect the other because the things that God has laid upon our hearts are different and so our focuses are different. As far as this man was concerned, we, we showed us how he was the one called the evangelist the other time. All, all he was get the just make sure that they enter heaven. <laughs> just get them born again and make sure they enter heaven. That's all he was concerned about. You know, others are coming to do some other jobs and so. Uh, so his own focus probably was not wasn't so much keen in that direction. You know, and so um, maybe people already knew that he wasn't. That's what just not his focus and appreciate each person's focus. So the call for these people, they lay hands upon them and, and then now Simon. That was the sorcerer who now got who got born again when he saw the miracles uh, that that Philip was uh, working. When he saw that through the laying on of hands of the you know the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, "Give me this power also." So that now Simon was all about money, and he thought he didn't believe that uh, one could have that kind of power without having paid something for it and so for him to get it also he also offered them money let me also have this power he probably told himself that when i get this power i also will be laying hands on people and people will be paying you know is <laughs> going to you know bring in some some uh, pickles and things like that so uh, that was why he offered money and peter you know gave him very very sharply so what can we learn from there it's possible that somebody gets born again but um, some old stuff still remains because you see it is gradually that your mind is renewed and then you know your, 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 your mind now becomes like the mind of Christ. At the beginning it is not instant like that. It doesn't happen like that. That's not the way it happens. Your mind is gradually metamorphosed into the, what it's supposed to be. That, that's, it. that's why some of us even after getting born again, I've seen people after getting born again, they were still smoking. I've seen people after getting born again, they were still committing fornication, you know, but gradually the word of God was used to walk them out of that whole situation, you know, and they, it, it went, it was over with completely. Now, that was what happened with this guy. Well, not that he wasn't born again. He got born again, truly, when he saw those miracles, he got baptized, you know, in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's what the Bible says. But you see, because his mind was not yet renewed enough, he was still he still had that tendency to chase that. Ah, this is money now. Ah, this is <laughs> you know he, he still had that thing, and so he offered them um, you know money for it, and Peter really gave it to him. But you see that leads us to something today, and which I have made you know our uh, um, title uh, this morning, and that is uh, the influence or the role. Of, of, of money in, in church positions. We find ourselves in a situation where in our day, the moment somebody has some money, quickly is made a deacon. Somebody has some money, before you know it, is even made a pastor, made a branch pastor, made to, um, to shepherd people, you know, believing that that is money he will pump into the church to make the church grow, you know, and this and that. That happens a lot, okay? That even within the church too, some people because they know they have money and they can make some you know serious do donations they already expect that the church is going to give them some title put them in, in charge of something you know or the other and when it doesn't happen they begin to feel bad that i cannot be putting in so much money and i'm not recognized you know that's the way some people think and the, what has led to it is because of these our values that are changing you know so badly of course when people know that what is happening all around is that having money matters to them in the church okay in your own church now if it looks as if your own church does not recognize this um thing about when you have money it's going to look as if your own church is strange whereas actually your own church is the one doing the right thing these other people are the ones who are doing the strange things but when strange things become commonplace they look like the right thing 
Yeah. So therefore, anybody who now says, no, that is not right, we should not, because you have money, therefore give you positions in the church, make you a deacon, make, make me a pastor, you, that particular person is going to look as if he's the one that is disrespectful. And it is not correct. It's these other ones who are pandering to what they ought not to pander to, you know, and that is put us in this kind of situation. Many, many people who ought not to touch, go near anything like pastoring because they are still novices according to the Bible, but because they have money. They, some of my colleagues, I'm sorry, we have a way of putting them in positions, make them assistant pastors, give them, you know, titles and things that they, they did not deserve as such now. You know, um, they need they would need some more time for themselves to grow. You know, but that's why the Bible says you don't put a novice in the position of a pastor or that of a deacon for that matter. That's what the Bible says. Okay, and that is why the pride. It says because his pride may make him fall, and that's why these same people they get so proud because because of the money they are also given position. You know, uh, when you now try to correct them, you know they really feel so bad. You know, it, it ought not to be, and we should correct these things and do things. Like According to what the Bible says, and not um, do what they call what we call respect of persons. I'm using King James language now, and and do respect of persons just because you know there's a bit of money here, or a bit of wealth there, a bit of comfort here, you know, and things like that. Praise the Lord. I think it's enough for this morning, and I pray that you have a fantastic day at work in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.